What's going on guys? My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. Today we're going to be talking about the Manix 2 and some things that I did to it, some learnings, and at the end of the video, some issues that I ran into. I'll, I'll kind of explain that at the end. So to start with, this is what my Manix 2 originally looked like. This is the Manix 2 in Rex 45. I had the G10 ball bearing cage. I had the orange G10 scales, and that is what she looked like. Now she looks like this. Okay, but there was a huge journey that you're going to see right up here that I'm going to put, and I'm just going to show you along the way. Sometimes I'll zoom in as I'm talking about it, but rather than do a disassembly video where you're watching me do it, I'm going to be doing a video of talking about the disassembly, talking about some of the issues that we had, uh, and some of the stuff we did. So first and foremost, the stuff that I changed out were the scales, the titanium ball cage. I also put a backs, or a pocket clip on here. And then I also got that set from OCD for EDC that states basically like it comes with the lighter spring, it comes with the ceramic detent ball, which is in there. And then it does come with a little push rod right here that what you can do to loosen up your spring tension by putting that push rod in like that and letting it sit overnight. So in essence, it looks like this. You have to do it in the open position, FYI. But let's start. So we started with a disassembly, right? And I didn't have the parts for OCD for EDC in yet. I didn't have the ceramic ball bearing or the spring. I was going to wait, but it hadn't shipped by the time I received this. So I was like, screw it. So the very first time I took apart a Manix, this was about a year, year and a half ago. Holy crap, that thing kicked my ass, right? I am much more efficient at tearing down a knife now. And this thing still beat my ass, okay? <laughs> First and foremost, the lanyard tube, which was used to be a problem, is no longer a problem. Once you work around lanyard tubes, that isn't the issue. The issue is this ball bearing cage with the spring. So we took apart the G10, right? I'm sitting here and I'm taking it apart. I get the G10 off and I'm like, okay. So I'm looking at it and the way this cage looks, if I have it in the video, I'm going to put it and zoom it in here so you guys can see the inside of it. It's not hard and it doesn't pop out at you right away, okay? Because... The way this cage right here that holds the spring, which holds the detent ball, if you will, or the ceramic ball for the cage here, it's tied into these four screws. When you loosen up this screw and back this out, this will go boing, right? Now, in order to get this out, you have to do that. You can't even take off the blade without really loosening this up. You might be able to, but it's just safer just to go the other way. So I took that out, and then you also have... <laughs> This detent, this is perfect. You have a detent cage here, and this looks just like the uh, the one on the titanium. It's the same exact model, but it's just, this is G10. Notice they're different, okay? This side has a little lip that rides a little bit higher than this side. This is where the ball goes, and it actually sits in your knife like this, to where the open side with the open face of the ball is actually riding, uh, this is... I was talking, is actually writing on the back side, not the front, which means the opening for the ball is going to go towards the back so that it's writing on that back side of the cage. Okay, just for clarification for those of you that are looking for that, because once I took it out, I forgot. I had to take it apart a couple times and figure it out, right? So next, we're getting it back together, and I put the spring back in. Let's assume that I'm putting the OCD spring, because we'll talk about them both right now. So I put OCD spring back in, and I rebuild everything, okay? So the action on the spring that OCD for EDC has is so light that I can literally snap open the knife, which is kind of frustrating. And, and guys, if there's any pet peeves that I have about knives, it's back and forth, a little bit of up and down, a little bit of detent play, like detent lash, and then this. If I can do that, it just, I won't carry the knife. There's no logical reason to be honest if we boil it down. If we had a knife with a little bit of play, a little bit of rock, anything, as long as it's not a safety issue, not really a big deal. One might argue that this is a safety issue when it opens, but I did have to apply some force, but it still drove me nuts. So the original spring is back in there right now. Uh, I put the original spring back in, but to loosen up that tension, I did let this sit overnight, and it does feel like it worked pretty well. Uh, the action on this is fantastic. That leads me to the point of the action on this was not fantastic. A, getting this thing centered in the beginning was kind of a nightmare, but it's also kind of a nightmare aligning these things together. Once I got it centered, the action wasn't very good. 
Now, once I got the action really good, this is where that problem comes into play, guys. This ball bearing cage is titanium. This back piece is freaking steel. These liners are freaking steel. This blade is freaking steel. What does that create? Galling. Insert definition of galling here. So what galling basically does is anytime you have two unlike metals and they're rubbing against each other, they actually create this chemical bond. It's basically like a corrosion style bond, right? They kind of bond together like this. It's an oxidization that keeps them together. And so as I'm doing this, it was clicking so bad. I could still feel it clicking a little bit, but oh my gosh, is this night and day difference. This is actually comfortable. Before, this was tearing at my hands because I had to pull so hard. Sometimes it was like, you know that lock stick where you go and it breaks and then you, and then you can do it and you're like, Jesus Christ, sometimes you feel like you got to pry it open. That's what this felt like. And it was so uncomfortable. And I can tell you this titanium cage is way better than the G10. It's just, this is smooth. This gives you so much traction, okay? So much traction that it feels amazing. So that leads me into the next problem. The next problem is this freaking thing was locking and I couldn't do anything, anything about it. What I ended up trying at the very end is I dumped some freaking isopropyl alcohol in there. To clean it all up, remove all the grease. Because if there's any grease or debris, it actually uh, accentuates that situation unless it's built to prevent that, right? So you wanted to get all the grease and oil off of those interfaces. Because as that oil is there, it actually makes it bond worse. It's kind of weird. So like you think that oil acts as a lubricant, and it does most of the time. But when you have two unlike surfaces rubbing together, it might <laughs> exasperate the problem rather than fix it. So you want to get all that oil out of there. Then I ended up taking some EDCI and I sprayed it in there and I got everything clean. And that did work. So it does kind of do this, but every now and then it's and it would still lock up. And I was happy with that. Okay. But I ended up trying something at the very end that fixed my problem. And let's see here. I wasn't intending to show it in this video. What did I do with it? Dun, dun, dun. Some magic black dust. So this magic black dust is, let's see here, it's a Dow Corning product. And where's that? It is a Dow Corning Lubricant Z Molly Powder. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that and kind of explaining all the different uses that I've found for it, which are in absolute sanity. And this stuff will last forever. I got a bottle this freaking big, and it'll last for freaking ever, guys. So I'm actually going to send some to my buddies. I'm going to package it up like little bags of black dust and send it out in the mail. You know what I mean? But you can use it on a lot of different things, and I'm still experimenting with it. Once I have kind of the finer details of it and the length of time that it lasts and so on and so forth, I'll, uh, I'll get more into detail, but basically the way it works is it's kind of like a graphite powder mixed with some other things, but it's built to prevent electrical connections that are sometimes built out of copper, sometimes out of zinc, sometimes out of cadmium. And as they're sitting there, they have a tendency to gall or create that oxidization layer between the materials. And not only does it have them stick together, but it also reduces conductivity. So you don't want that in electrical products. Well, we're going to use that here. We don't want any galling, not for the electricity or the elect conductivity rather, but we don't want it because we don't want any sticking. So what you do is, is you take this powder and inside this cage, which I will pop up here, inside that cage, you got that metal piece. Oops. And we're going to back up. We got that metal piece right here that rides along. So what I did was is I took this ball bearing cage out and I rolled it in this stuff. Now, this stuff will wipe off with your hands and kind of oil, but as you kind of burnish it, where you're kind of just rubbing it into there, it does have a tendency to stick, even though you might not be able to see it as well, right? So you want to burnish it into the material, then put a little bit of extra layer on there, wipe it off to where you can see it, but it's not over the top, right? You're going to get a little bit of this really nasty black dust kind of falling out for one or two flicks, but... That's what we ended up with, guys. It prevents all the galling. It prevents any stick with this titanium cage that I was really disappointed because you're so excited to turn your 
orange, you know, turn this with a black cage into this, right? You're so excited to do that. And when it sticks, it's just disappointing. So I'm glad I found a solution. I'm glad I can share it with you guys. And yes, use that for this. But guys, I have some pretty cool stuff coming out with this. Um, and I just need to do a little bit more hands-on research and, and trial and error before I give you guys some information on it. As of right now, it has been working for about two and a half to three days. I haven't noticed it rubbing off. I don't know if it will, but to apply it, it's still super, super easy. As I said, you apply it to the cage, but I also want you guys, if you guys are going to try this, get like a, a Q-tip. Here, we'll go through it right now. Get like a Q-tip, right? You take off all this excess because this excess will just get in your way. So you want, it, you want a very narrow, thin Q-tip right here. So you got, you got it like that, take off all the excess, and then you're going to spin it together. So it looks real. See the difference? Now you're going to get this in here. And then you're just going to tuck it on the tang of the blade and kind of roll it around. Now, guys. Insane. Absolute insanity. Yes, it does stick right there because I do have it a little bit tighter than I should just because I hate the back and forth so much I don't want it to show its head. But all that being said, this is some miracle stuff here, guys. And I'll be going on some more rants about it. If you guys are interested in trying it out, you know, maybe if you guys just pay me shipping and handling or something, I'll send you a little baggie and it'll go forever. I don't know. We'll figure that out as time goes on. But this is my new and improved Rex 45 Manix 2, and I absolutely love this knife. Not sure if I love the pocket clip on it yet. Obviously, not a hot spot. It's just kind of ugly. So we might be looking into something else, and I might be doing something else with these scales in the future. But as of right now, I am so happy to have this back. This was my first love, and I, I still love it. It's up there with my favorite Spydercos, although I have a lot of favorite Spydercos, so that might be a little redundant. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys are looking forward to the video with that stuff, because there's a lot of learnings that we're doing, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to provide a lot of practical use for you guys, and it's not hard to get your hands on this stuff. But if you have any questions about the Manix 2, I'm pretty confident at this point that I can answer most of them. OCD for EDC's product, I guess we'll call it a review. I recommend the idea of it. The ceramic ball is very good. You can feel a difference immediately from the steel ball. And the spring kind of detensioner that you can stick in there and make your spring a little lighter is very cool for the stock spring. The spring that he provides is, in my opinion, it's stupid light. It's kind of fun. But then when you see your blade kind of start to fall out, you're like, this sucks. It has no detent strength because that's the detent too. I just don't like that spring. As far as the titanium gear that's on here, I think it's all fantastic. But you do need something a little extra to prevent that galling on that titanium versus the steel. If you guys like disassembly videos, which I actually do now. I didn't before. But if you do, I'm going to link another one here, which is a new one that I've done. This is Civivi Cogent. Put that right there. And just go check it out. It's a super fun video. Very short. I'm trying to keep these much shorter than usual. So, my name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day.